Welcome to Conversations with Denise. I'm your host, Denise, and we're in the month of August. And school has started, and so I want to we are going to be talking today on how to prepare for a successful school year. I'm going to be talking to a teacher. I'm going to be talking to some college students because a lot of times when we think about preparing for the school year, our mind, as parents, we go to younger children, elementary, middle school, high school, but there's some preparations and there's some things that even those who have just graduated need to prepare in going into the college um, years and starting a new, I guess, era, a new in their life concerning education. So we're going to be talking to a teacher who's going to give us some good tips on what we as parents can do, what we as a community can do, what we as a overall can do to help prepare our children for a successful school year. One of the things I know most importantly is that our children need to read more. And we're going to talk about that, how the effects of children who are read to at home, how they succeed much more in school and at a quicker pace, at a faster pace. So I'll be right back with my first guest, uh, a teacher who's going to be talking with us how to ensure a successful school year for your child this year. We'll be back after this break. KIPP is now enrolling kindergarten for next year. To apply, call us or visit our website, kipjacks.org. So we are back, and uh, like I said, we're going to be talking to uh, t uh, parent and teachers on the show on today about how to ensure that your child is going to have a successful school year. And my guest on today is Ms. Courtney Mills. She is a high school math teacher as well as a parent. So, welcome to the show. Thank you. And uh, what I want to talk to you about first is how do you prepare or how have you prepared for your child to um, go into the school year and to make sure that his school year is successful? Um, I focus on things I can help him in life, like respect, mm -hmm. um, being able to focus, knowing how to treat children, adults, okay. and interact with them. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's very important, just a foundation for, for him to have as he grows. As he grows. What, what grade is he going to? Kindergarten. He's so, going, so it's a fresh, fresh Right, a huge transition. Was he in like daycare or preschool? Before? Yeah, daycare. Uh, he just did VPK. Okay, so now he's going to um, a structured environment because I heard you use the word structure because um, I know coming out of like a VPK and, and pre-kindergarten is different because now it's you're doing the ABCs, you're reading. And, and they start writing. testing them in kindergarten. They start testing them in kindergarten. Oh, gosh. Okay. So giving them foundational structure, respect, respecting others, getting along with others, that's uh, part of. What about as far as um, prepping them with schoolwork? Did you do any reading? Did you do any math? Or Yes, I have workbooks at home, um, and I also... Inter the internet is very, very beneficial. Okay. So if you just go on Google and type in ways to uh, help a kindergartner or kindergarten activities or whatever grade your child is in, you can look up things online and print them or either just write them yourself. And you did that before the school year? Correct. And like he's doing that now. Oh, he's doing it. And that's what a lot of parents don't, don't do. I think that we think, well, parents say, well, we're sending them to school to learn but we don't send them in with the tools that they need when they get there, like respect, like structure, um, knowing how the basic stuff, or having some um, type of introduction, especially when they're going to kinderg kindergarten or elementary um, grade levels, so that they're not going in kind of cold. Or in going into an environment, if it's a new school, if it's a new grade, they're, everything is new to them. Yeah. And so you have to prepare them um, as parents now. On the flip side, you're a teacher. Yes. You're a high school math teacher. What are some of the things that you do or you're going to be doing to ensure that your uh, students have a successful year this year? And one thing I did this summer, um, they do provide workshops. And I okay. think that's something that a lot of teachers um, don't take advantage of. 
because I learned a lot about building my relationship with my students. Mm -hmm. It's very important cool. because if your student doesn't respect you mm -hmm. or trust you, mm -hmm. there's a huge barrier. Yeah. And yeah. so it's hard for them to focus or to learn. Or if you're telling them, you know, you should do this, it's going to go over their head. Right. But if they have that trust and respect and you build that relationship, it's easier to get them to focus to do what they need to do. So I think that's very important. So as a teacher, you prepared by actually educating yourself yeah. to some degree. Yeah. And so you didn't just like hang out all summer. <laughs> Not with a pre-kindergarten or a kindergarten, I know. But um, so as a teacher, you have those as well, have some kind of tools, preparation because you're dealing with what grade levels? Nine through 12, I teach all grades. So you have a variety of personalities. Some are all in the same class, like I might have a class with nine through 12th grade in that one class. And you teach the same subject? Same. I have four different subjects. Okay, so if you have a ninth and 12th grader in the same class, they're learning the same thing? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay, so what, uh, what would you say to a parent, you know, you're, that's, some of the students you've had last year, that you may see again this year. What do you want to tell that parent that you need them to do with their child before school starts? Yes, I think it's very important, even for high school students, I think that some parents become very lax, like, you know, you're old enough, or you're an adult, you should know, mm -hmm. but they still need that assistance in staying on track. I think it's important for the parent to reach out to the teacher, find out what this teacher, how this teacher is, what's the teacher's attitude, once you know that information, you know, the back and forth, you know, my teacher said this or the teacher tells you this, you'll know for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's very important for the parent to build that relationship okay. yeah. with the teacher yeah. so they know what they're dealing with. Yeah. Um, also, the learning strategies with your child. I think that's very important during the summer so they come in prepared to learn. Right. Because testing is huge now. Yeah. You know, okay. if you don't pass a certain test, you're mm -hmm. failing a grade. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just building it up from the ground up it all helps the parent the teacher the student if everyone's working together and cohesive right. you're most likely will be successful successful so, it, and I, I i totally agree so it's not just the teacher's job to pull out or educate the child the parents have to also and i think if we come together as parents as a community and as teachers and, and those that um, can help our children learn and grow if we come together and just work together, we'll always ensure that our students have a successful school year. One of the things that you said, which is key and important, um, a lot of parents don't like to hear their children fail. Mm -hmm. But you said testing this year, or I, I don't know if it's this year only, but it's getting a, a lot more stringent mm -hmm. to where is if they don't pass, I mean, don't pass the testing, then they're gonna be, they'll fail the grade. And that's hard for a lot of parents to, to handle. So to that, what do you say to the parent? I say to the parent to know what's going on. I've had conferences where a student needs a test to graduate and the parent had no idea about it. You know, you can't expect your child as a child still, even in high school, to come and tell you everything right. because they're, they want to chill, you know, and have their fun. Right. They know if you know as a parent what they really need, you're going to push them. That's good. So the parent has to know what's going on. You know, you can't just find out at the end of the year your child needs yeah. us to graduate and now you're upset. Find out what's going on so you know ahead of time you can keep your child on track. Awesome. Well, you have been great. Thank you so much for coming on the show. You, you shared a whole lot of wisdom um, and enlightenment to not just teachers or students, but also to the parents. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Come, Come back yeah. and we'll talk some more about our students, okay? I'll be right back after this break with more conversations with Denise. And then from this angle, it all makes a star. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore. And frustration, a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. And then we're going to turn on the lights and everybody look up. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought. Five, What's your reaction? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And unconventional methods. Uh, okay, what else? Common. This is their world. Nothing. And then they die. Go ahead, go, go, go. I'm a teacher. I make more.
Okay, so we're back and we're talking about how to ensure a successful school year. Spoke with um, some teachers earlier in reference to how to plan uh, or help our children plan a successful school year. But I'm kind of moving away from the elementary and high school grades right now. I want to introduce to you my next guest. I have with me Miss Unique Jackson and Mr. Jamal Ajuman. Did I get it right? Yep. Very good. Okay. They're both college students at JU right here in the city of Jacksonville. And so I just wanted to um, ask you first to just tell everybody a little bit about yourself, and then we want to go ahead and just start the conversation with how do you all prepare uh, for a successful year? Well, first, I'm a kinesiology major, an education minor. I'm also a member of the football team. So to prepare for a successful school year, I really just make sure I have all my school supplies, um, make sure I get on my textbooks, things like mm -hmm. that. And I like to start reading ahead just so I know what kind of material we'll be getting into. And you're a rising junior. Yep. Rising junior. Okay. And Miss Unique? Yes. So Unique Jackson. I attend Jackson University. Uh -huh. I am a senior there. This is my last year. Hopefully Very good. graduating in spring of <laughs> 2017. So, okay. Um, I'm an aviation management major. Okay. Yes. So Kinesi Kinesiology. Kinesiology. And what are you looking forward to going into in the future? I really want to be a strength coach. And okay. later down the line, I want to open up my own gym mm -hmm. and be a head trainer there. Head trainer. Very good. And you you want to pl fly planes or you want to? Well, right now I have my private pilot's license. Oh. And then I hope to continue on as far as to getting my ATP. Uh -huh. And But as far as right now, business-wise, I'm looking to get into aviation consulting. Okay. Well, you guys have been in school for a few years, so I can't ask you how was your first year of college. Well, I mean, <laughs> because you guys are you're on your way out. You're like, I'm trying to get out. Yeah, here. right. <laughs> um, but just if you can reflect back just a little bit, you're transitioning from high school, leaving home. Are you all from Jacksonville or you're not? I'm from Miami. You're from Miami. Yep. I'm from St. Petersburg. Okay, so you're not local. No. Transitioning, coming from one place, which is home, to another place, starting your life. What was, was the transition? Was it hard? Did you get homesick? Um, did you think you weren't going to make it? I was good. I never. I never <laughs> but you're a football player. Yeah. So. And um, my sister still lives in the city, so okay. if there were little things I needed, like extra laundry detergent, uh -huh. or like my first my first semester, I didn't have a car, so if I needed a ride to go shopping, she'd take so me So you anywhere. had support here. Yep. Oh, and I was different. I was ready to leave home. Oh, you were ready to leave yeah. home. <laughs> yeah. And then you were football players. So football players, they have a whole different. Yeah, we had a lot of structure. A lot of structure. It's, yeah, a lot of structure. Yeah. What about yours? My transition was a little hectic. I went from St. Petersburg, and I did my first year of school in Colorado. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, like, I, like him, I was ready to go. Like, I yeah. was like, all right, it's time to spread my wings. It's time to get out. I think, I don't think I ever got homesick. It was more so my mom. Like, yeah. Because I had gotten out there. I had met friends. Uh -huh. I was doing what I wanted to do. I was really happy. And my mom was just like. But let me ask you, I, the St. Pete's, I don't even know if you all get cold down there, but going no. from St. Pete's to Colorado? It was, it was different. A shock to it your was, system. Yeah, like, I, you know, you usually just like a sweatshirt if you get cold in, like, Florida. Really? Like, yeah, like, you know, sometimes, like, at night. Uh -huh. Or if you go to Georgia and, like, uh -huh. visit family, like, you get a sweatshirt that's, like, $10, and okay. boom, you're good. No, I had to buy a, uh, what is it, a snow coat? Yeah. And a snow coat? Like I, a snorkel, probably. That was my first time ever having one. I think I had one when I was younger, because uh -huh. we used to travel a lot, but... And it was like a hundred dollars, and I wasn't excited about that. But my roommate's grandmother ended up buying it for me. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, yeah. she was really nice about it because I had no idea what to even pick. And coming from Florida to Colorado, had you ever experienced snow? Yes. Okay. It wasn't my first time, but I was still that kid that was in the snow, and everybody's yeah. like, "I'm over <laughs> I was like, oh, snow." Well, I'm from the Northeast, so really? I don't ever have to see snow again. <laughs> I, I grew up in it. I grew up in it. Okay. So life after high school, you guys were ready to go. So that made a, a I guess a, a big difference with leaving, going away. You had support here. Yep. When you got to college, was the experience on campus what you guys were expecting? Yes and no. Okay. Um, I had this misconception that, high, that college would be a bunch of people jumping around, partying all the time. Uh -huh. And it wasn't really like that. Okay. People actually had things to do, and, you know, they're all trying to yeah, get well, into their you, different you, careers. Yeah, you have to kind of do your work at JU, though, yeah. pretty much, if you, if you plan on staying there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got pretty much to do your work. What about yours? 
It, I mean, there are kids that party, mm -hmm. but I was just, I was so in tune with, like, with flying. Okay. And with flying, you couldn't, you couldn't get caught. Especially, I was underage. I started college when I was 17. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah so I oh really. Oh, my goodness. Did your mom let you go to Colorado? It was hard. Woo! It was really. <laughs> she started yeah. crying as soon as she got in the park. As soon as she was, you know, jogging away from the parking yeah. lot. Yeah. But, I mean, I just wasn't trying to get into that. Uh -huh. And then as I transferred to JU and I saw, like, I mean, I don't know what you saw. But I saw kids that were into that. Uh-huh. And I mean, it, it's kind of enticing a little bit, but you're like, eh, okay. Yeah, I need to do what I need to do. Yeah. What, what about, how, how old were you when you got your uh, pilot's license? I was 18. You were 18. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've been flying for a little bit now. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and, and I mean, that's that's amazing. Um, what major changes did you guys have to make? I know you did going to Colorado yeah. with the snow thing, but as far as you're saying you came on campus and you kind of saw that there's a group over here that's kind of like, you right. know, partying, hanging out, not really doing what they need to be doing. Was it was it hard for you to kind of draw that line, um, or were you guys like like you are now focused? I think I've always been focused. Mm -hmm. I think just the major adjustment was making sure I was mature enough to know what I wanted to do and mm -hmm. to hold myself accountable and mm -hmm. responsible to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Like getting up out of bed early to go to classes or making sure yeah. I got breakfast. You know, just taking care of myself and getting what I need to get done done. And I, I, I think that's something that a lot of um, teenagers need to hear going from high school into college. I need to take a break, but we're going to come back. I'm going to finish talking to Unique and Jamal, and I think this is a great conversation. We'll be right back after this break. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome. Oh, I think we're breathtaking. And here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, G. I got this. <coughs> Is that brand? Colleges love extracurricular activities. That chess really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. OK, so we're back. And we left off with you guys You know, talking about how you kind of had to focus on when you went into school, especially you flying planes. I'm yeah. kind of glad of that, because you're looking into going um, into, is it commercial pilot? Commercial. You would like, yeah, so we, we need you to stay focused. Yes. <laughs> and we need you to make sure focused bodies is lining up and bones is working right. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you guys, are you all paying for college out of pocket? Are you scholarship? What, is it? What, we, I because I know college. JU is expensive. Yeah. Um, it's a great school, don't get me wrong, but. I got a great financial aid package, okay. and I'm also an RA, so I don't have to pay. So you're, you're not, that's, these guys are great. And what about you? I pay for it out of pocket. You pay for it out of pocket, <laughs> yes. so you feel like me, like with, I pay for my sons, so I understand. Yeah. Um, um, this is a hard question, but I'm going to ask it because sometimes people will say, well, I don't know. Um, do you think that, because you're paying for it, do you think that you're getting the education that you're paying for? I believe so. Yeah. I believe in order for you to get the education that you pay for, you have to put into it. You have to put into it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think now that I've done an internship uh -huh. and I've left school for a year mm -hmm. to do, complete the internship, I look at college differently. Where'd you do your intern? Wyoming. <laughs> oh, this is a traveling girl. I tell you what. So what did you do your internship in? I did two internships. The first six months, I did it with the Cheyenne Regional Airport. And okay. then the second six months was with the Department of Transportation, awesome. the Aeronautics Division. Awesome. Did you get paid or was it paid? I did. You did? Well, that I was couldn't, good. I couldn't move to Wyoming. Yeah, not for six months. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a long year. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. I'm sure it was a great experience. Yeah. I'm, I'm great experience. And you, you said you have a great financial aid package. Yeah. yeah. Although I don't pay, I still think it's a really good experience overall, not just with the education, uh -huh. just you know, with the on-campus life, um, all the assistance that we can get. Mm -hmm. uh, we have tutors. We have a good academic support staff. So if you need help it. picking classes, we mm -hmm. really have everything we need. And we, we, we get the hookup for internships. That's so good. It's great. And you're an RA. Yep. OK, so you have, like, a responsibility on you because you are kind of responsible for 
about whole, 20 people. I was, yeah, I was going to say, maybe, is it a floor or is it just... I have, I have my own wing. Okay, and, um, your own wing, yeah. yeah. So, how was that experience? It's different. It was a big was adjustment first at first. Year? No, last year was my first year. Okay. So, I already have a year under my belt, and now I'm going into my second year. Okay. It was different? It's very different. <laughs> Just put myself out there and getting to know 20 different people for a full year. Yeah, yeah. And having to be on call. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And Just, then making sure that people are doing and what they're supposed to be doing. And I, yep. I, I, I wasn't an RA, but I had a great RA. Okay. Um, so I understand. Mm -hmm. um, how are you guys preparing for your future when you leave? You're on your way out. You said 2017, spring. I don't want to leave yet. You don't want to leave? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm excited to leave because I'm excited to stop paying for yeah. it. And then get yeah. paying the loans. But I mean, it's kind of a safety blanket if you think about it. I was going to say, and some people say, well, I'm not ready to, I'm not, re well, I'm not ready to adult yet or to be adult. Yeah, adulting, that, yeah. yeah. Adulting, yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it is a great responsibility, right. leaving school, but you're a traveling girl. Though, right. Well, minute. I mean, like, what the year I did for the internship, it really prepared me. Yeah. And it gave me, like, a whole, a whole different perspective and a whole different outlook as looking on to college and like my past right so i mean it's prepared me for all the things that i have to do as far as paying mm -hmm. for loans because i had to start paying my loans back when i was out in wyoming wow so okay you're going now when you leave ju mm -hmm. in the spring you're going to another level of schooling when i leave spring i complete my undergrad you're done and yes in order to become a commercial pilot then what in order to commercial commercial pilot i had to gain the hours and the certificates okay Awesome, awesome. And when you leave, you are you going to graduate school? Or are you? Yes, that's the plan. I plan on being a GA, um, working with the football team. Gotcha. Okay. I'm not sure whether I want to get into strength, being a strength coach out of college, uh -huh. or being a football coach. But either way. Okay. With your heart, where's your heart? Football? Or are you? It's right down the middle. I'm right down the middle. Yeah. Huh? I mean, you got what another year or so to make two it years. Two okay. years. Yeah. All right. Well. Can, let, can you guys like kind of just talk to some uh, maybe transitioning seniors that's getting ready to go? You got some words of wisdom. They're getting ready to go to college so that they're not going in with false expectations, thinking that, uh, oh, I don't have to go to school every day and I don't have to really go to classes because my mom is not here. That was me my first semester. And you know what? It hit me, and I'm going to let you guys talk. It hit me like um, the, in the winter. I, was, I, I would call home and say, hey, I want to go such and such. Is it okay? Mom would say, yeah, you can go. go. And then it hit me and I said, how would she know? Not a good thing. <laughs> Not a good thing. So some words of wisdom um, for our young adults that's getting ready to go into college. Everything that happens in college, or not everything, most things are completely about what you do and how you react to them. So it's up to you to get up early for class and eat, exercise, do your homework and study. All that is up to you and that, how you spend college is gonna dictate how you spend the next however so many years in your career. Awesome. I think the biggest thing, like I was one of those kids who could not get up, put your alarm clock on the other side of the room. Oh, good <laughs> I had answer. to do that because I had like 7 a.m. flight blocks. Whoa. Yeah, and so that's one of the biggest things, but I think Really, the biggest thing is just to make sure that that's the college you want to go to. Okay. And I think to determine the college experience that uh -huh. you want. Because, I mean, granted, like, some kids are going to party, and that's what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's anything wrong partying. Mm -hmm. I just think if you do it responsibly, you know, then you'll be fine. Awesome. But if, I think you need to determine the college experience that you want and choose if that college is right for you. Very good. Yeah. Very good. I, and I, I think they both said very well, most importantly, what they're saying is just be responsible. You are going to be responsible right. for yourself when you leave your parents' home and go to college. Well, thank you guys. Thank you both for being on the show. I wish you much success, especially you, because I'm probably going to be on one of those planes and right. have to call you uh, to be my private pilot. But thank you all so much. I wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I know you enjoyed the show because I did. I was especially impressed with, of course, the teachers. Teachers are a gift and they're a, a, really a blessing to those of us who have uh, children. But the college students, the instructions, the wisdom that they gave to those who are entering in. And what I, I liked about them is that they were just themselves. You know, and a lot of times to ensure a successful school year, you have to make preparation. And if you don't prepare, you're not going to succeed. So parents, teachers, community, let's make sure that this year is a very successful school year for our children. I'll see you next time on Conversations with Denise, and we'll have great conversations for you. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you've been enjoying the show so far. If you have any ideas you would like for me to talk about on the show, why don't you email me, Facebook me, or contact me at the address on the screen and let me know your ideas. I'm looking forward to talking with you next time on Conversations with Denise.